know you can go almost anywhere in a car. You can go to soccer practice, the grocery store, even school. You can climb mountains, cross the desert, see the city. Whoa. <laughs> but with so many of us driving so many cars, so many places, we're starting to affect the environment. That's why we're working to make cars and trucks cleaner. We humans are busy. We're always doing things, and that takes energy. Energy is what makes things go, run, or happen. See, we're always moving ourselves, everything we make, even our food, from one place to another. And that takes energy, too. Right now, when we make energy, somewhere along the line, we're usually making waste. Like if we burn coal or gas, well, that gives off carbon dioxide and other gases. When we make electricity, we usually burn coal and natural gas, making exhaust over here, and sending electricity down wires over there. Now, for us to have trucks, trains, and airplanes, we need energy. But what we have to figure out is how to have enough energy while having a healthy environment, keeping it clean, livable, and sustainable for all of us. Right, guys? Right, Bill? Take a look at this. It's our miniature car waste comparison test track of science. This is a miniature transportation system. It's a little truck. Now, when we run this truck, it's going to use energy and that's going to make waste. Car and truck exhaust ends up in the air. We can't always see it, but we can detect it. This is a carbon dioxide, a CO2 detector. Watch. <laughs> the exhaust from cars full of tiny particles of dirt, and some of the oxygen in the air gets converted to carbon dioxide and other gases that aren't nice, pure oxygen anymore. So, in this little test, the car used up all the oxygen. <coughs> On top of that, we've all been driving so many cars and burning other fuels like wood, coal, oil, and gas for so many years that now the world's atmosphere has more carbon dioxide in it than ever before in history. Now along with driving cars, making them takes energy and makes waste too. And that stuff ends up in the atmosphere, somewhere. There are ways to make cars using less energy, and there are ways to make cars that use less energy. Number one! You okay? Thanks, crew. We can build cars and trucks with tires that roll more easily, but that's just a start. We can also make cars and trucks that have both a gasoline engine and an electric motor. The electric motor is good when you're starting and stopping in the city traffic, and the gas engine is good out on the open road. These cars and trucks are more efficient. They use less energy. They use less gas. One way we can use less gas is to use alternative fuels. When this corn was growing, it converted the energy of sunlight into the chemicals of this corn. Try this experiment. You can make your own alternative fuel. Get a big plastic bottle like this one. Pour in about 500 milliliters. That's about two cups of water. Then add in about 60 milliliters. That's about a quarter cup of corn syrup. Make sure an adult helps you out. Now get some yeast. It is the main ingredient in bread. One package is all you'll need. Swirl the bottle to mix everything up. Now, instead of a bottle cap, put a balloon on the bottle and let it sit overnight. Look, the yeast is a little population of tiny organisms. They use corn syrup as food. They give off carbon dioxide gas, which filled the balloon. They also make another type of alcohol called ethanol. There are many ways to make ethanol. It's usually made with grains, such as corn. Corn is easy to grow. Scientists can grow tons of corn, collect the ethanol, and use it for fuel on cars. 
It's clean and we can renew it just by growing plants on a farm. I'm generating all the electricity for this little reading light by pedaling. And the light's not very bright and I'm working pretty hard. Now think about all the lights in your classroom and the electricity to run this video player. Then think about all the classrooms in your school and all the schools around the country and all the houses and businesses around the world that use electricity. I mean, we're working too hard to waste it. So turn off the light when you leave the room. Turn off the television when the show's over. Close the refrigerator door. You're letting all the cold air out. Conserve energy. <sighs> Whoa! Whoa. Ah. When we drive, we're using energy. In a car, that energy comes from the chemicals in gasoline. Hey! The chemicals get combined with oxygen in the air, and off we go. You can see right away that exhaust is the car's waste product. Exhaust is made of carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, oily soot, hydrocarbons. Scientists have been working for years to make cars run cleaner. They are cleaner. We recover and burn the excess fuel that used to go out the tailpipe. This is a catalytic converter. When exhaust gases come down the exhaust pipe, they run into special chemicals in the converter called catalysts. They convert the bad chemicals in the exhaust into almost harmless ones before they reach our air. Now, catalytic converters have been around about 30 years. They're a great idea. They're science. See? But still, anytime you drive a car like this, you're using energy stored in the earth from the days of dinosaurs. This stored energy, called fossil fuel, is not a renewable resource, and the burning of it affects the air worldwide. What are renewable resources? Lots of things. A windmill uses energy from the wind to turn. The turning creates power, and its energy source is wind. We have lots of that, and we always will. Check out a water wheel. It turns by using the flow of water in a river. It doesn't actually take the water away. The running water is a renewable resource. Like these cars here, made by General Motors. What do they use for energy? You'll soon find out. Electricity. That's what we use to make cars and trucks. See, the less electricity we need in the machines that we use to build and test cars and trucks, well, the more energy we save. This is a 1932 Cadillac. It's a beauty. But cars like this used a lot more gasoline than cars do today, and their exhaust was a lot dirtier. <laughs> but just look at these details. Wow. Someone went to all the trouble. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> this is a General Motors Pontiac Grand Prix. Its smooth, sleek curves make it streamlined, so it has less air resistance as it goes down the road. And that saves energy. Modern cars are made of more efficient materials, too. Nowadays, some car parts are made from old ones. The raw rubber to make mud flaps like this comes from old tires. Now, we're not recycling a whole car, not yet, but it's a start. Modern cars weigh less, too. Here's an old-style metal bumper. Ah, <coughs> and here's a modern plastic one. Ah, they both do the same job, but this one weighs a lot more. You ready? Three, two, one. Ah, ha, ha, ha. See, when cars weigh less, they're easier to get going and to slow down. And that saves energy. This is a gasoline engine. It gets its energy from its fuel. Gasoline gets squirted in here where it mixes with air. Then a spark plug makes a small explosion. The explosion pushes this piece down, which turns this crank and the car goes down the road. Now, in an engine like this, there are thousands of explosions every minute. That's how gasoline-powered cars can get going so fast. Now, after the explosions happen, the air and carbon dioxide and other gases are all thrown out the tailpipe. That's exhaust. This is an electric car. But instead of getting its electricity from, say, a battery, gets its electricity from a new technology source of energy, a fuel cell. Now in here is a thin, thin layer of special plastic, and it's coated with thin, thin layers of special metals, platinum and rhodium. You see them sometimes on shiny jewelry or other shiny objects. Oh, 
In this tube is pure oxygen. And in this tube is pure hydrogen. When I throw this little switch, they come together in the fuel cell and they form a new hydrogen-oxygen combo you may be familiar with. H2O, water, and they also make electricity. Watch. This model is, well, a model. And a car big enough to carry people and their stuff around will use a different source of hydrogen, probably natural gas and oxygen from the air. And someday, if we can make these fuel cells big enough and tough enough, perhaps we'll have new technology vehicles everywhere. <sighs> the exhaust is just water. We have a lot of good ideas. We clean up exhaust using catalytic converters. We're using recycled materials. And we're learning how to use renewable resources, like water, for energy in our vehicles. Oh, it's an exciting time to be alive. Who knows, by the time you're driving, or your kids are driving, maybe cars will have hardly any effect on the environment at all. Instead, they'll be running on clean, renewable fuels. Oh, I can't wait. It's an energy revolution. Meanwhile, do your part to clean up the world. It's fun.